And hello again, everybody. I'm Rick Sanchez. We find ourselves once again here in B-Control, where we bring you news. War in Iraq, war in Afghanistan, and now talk of fighting maybe in Pakistan. Background. Pakistan is probably where bin Laden is. We're his number two, Zawahiri is. They hate President Musharraf, and they're going after him. And the U.S. may need to go in and help. The Pentagon's top officer was put on the spot about a possible Pakistan deployment. Not by a congressman, not by a reporter, but by somebody with a much stronger personal investment in all of this. An army wife. Listen to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs answer the question. Here's her question. Will my husband go to war in Pakistan? We're working real hard with Fred Mishar, offering to uh, work uh, as closely uh, with intel uh, and with uh, kinetic effects as uh, he is comfortable uh, work, working with and we're, we're working through that. Kinetic effects. We checked. Kinetic could very well mean using artillery to fire into Pakistan. Boots on the ground? No. That's what the general says. Absolutely not. Certainly not at this point. But it doesn't rule out something else. If he needed uh, uh, support of uh, uh, fires or he needed um, uh, some kind of other um, uh, air support, uh, if he were to ask that, we would, cer we would certainly um, uh, sit down with him and, and see how it was, how was going to be used. All right, let me try and set the record for you because I think it's important sometimes to get a geographic perspective on this. Roger, go ahead. Put up uh, the shot that we're talking about here. Now, these are the three guys that we're talking about. Musharraf, you see him on the right of your screen. Zawahiri, you see him in the middle. Bin Laden, you see him on the left. Now let's go ahead to the map and show you where these guys could possibly be. This is uh, Google Earth, and we're going to go in right into the area that we're talking about. You see the line there that separates Afghanistan with uh, that part of Pakistan? Well, Wahiristan, that strange word that you see there with the north and south, that's that mountainous region where supposedly both bin Laden and Zawahiri possibly are. That's also the area the United States has never gone into, or at least as far as we know, fired into. But you see the part there where Afghanistan is. That's where cities like Jalalabad are. That's where Bagram Air Force Base is. That is where quite possibly we are learning today from experts that we have spoken to the U.S. could use launches to possibly use uh, Hellfire missiles or long-range missiles, possibly use drones to go into that area and either go after Al-Qaeda or maybe even go after bin Laden and Zawahiri themselves. And somehow try and bail out President Musharraf of Pakistan. So what does the White House say about the potential for any military action in Pakistan? Is it even on the table at this point? Definitely, is what we're hearing. You're CNN's White House correspondent, Henry. President's top aides say U.S. military action in Pakistan's tribal areas is on the table to target al-Qaeda and the Taliban. No question that we will use any instrument at our, at our disposal to deal with the problem of Osama bin Laden and Zawahiri and al-Qaeda. The White House is on the defensive after a new government report declared Pakistan has become a safe haven for al-Qaeda. After putting massive resources into a war in Iraq, we have lost sight of the goal of capturing Osama bin Laden and closing down al-Qaeda. Mr. Bush is walking a tightrope. He's been praising Pakistan, even though a deal that President Pervez Musharraf cut last year with tribal leaders has helped al-Qaeda regain momentum. Musharraf is a strong ally in the war against these extremists. Now Pakistani leaders are irked by the talk of U.S. military strikes within its borders. Pakistan army can do the job much better, and the result will be that there will be far, far less collateral damage. I understand their anger, but of course, Wolf, the president made perfectly clear that job number one is protecting the American people. There are no tools off the table, and we use all our instruments of national power to be effective. The tensions come with Pakistan already in flames as militants retaliate for Musharraf ordering an attack on the pro-Taliban Red Mosque. <laughs> The chaos may force Musharraf to finally crack down in the remote tribal regions, where U.S. officials believe al-Qaeda has regrouped and bin Laden may be hiding. At this point, uh, he's still being pushed by the militants. They still have the initiative. Uh, but uh, he may decide, if this continues, that he doesn't have any choice any longer.
U.S. officials say they're committed to working with Musharraf, and they can't push him too hard. His government falls, an extremist regime can take over and get its hands on Pakistan's nuclear weapons. A nightmare scenario. Ed Henry, CNN, Washington. Let's go through this for you a little bit more. If, and obviously it's a big if, but if the United States military decides to send troops to support Pakistan against Al Qaeda, they're not going to be starting an offensive. They're actually going to be joining an offensive. The peace deal between Pakistan's army and the Islamic groups on the Afghan border is no more. And the fight is back on between these two. Just this weekend, Pakistan forces reportedly killed 19 militants in uh, scattered gun battles there. Same militants are setting off bombs near military convoys and attacking troop positions. A relatively calm period in the border region. That's around that area you may have heard of before, Quetta. It's uh, lasted less than a year. Uh, now would be even talking about this tonight if Osama bin Laden was out of the picture. No. Uh, if he was in prison, on trial, or dead, we wouldn't. Who knows? But the fact is, he got away. Why? Because CIA officials on the ground asked the White House for help, but they didn't get it. Here's our terrorism analyst now, the best in the business, Peter Bergen. Mistake number one, a big one, letting Osama bin Laden go. U.S. Special Forces had bin Laden cornered in the Tora Bora Mountains of Afghanistan in late 2001. The CIA commander on the scene asked for more forces to catch al-Qaeda's leader, but was turned down. And bin Laden escaped. Mistake number two, getting distracted. The United States ousted the Taliban and chased al-Qaeda into Pakistan. But then it shifted its focus and manpower to Iraq, leaving just a handful of U.S. operatives to catch bin Laden. Art Keller hunted al-Qaeda in Pakistan just last year when he was with the CIA. Uh, a medical analogy, it's like a um, quick of antibiotics too soon. You just uh, leave a reservoir of infection even stronger to come back after you. There are now more Americans on the ground in Pakistan, but the damage has already been done. Mistake number three, misunderstanding the enemy. The Bush administration hoped that Iraq would draw terrorists to one place, making them easier to kill, the so-called flypaper theory. But the opposite happened. Iraq has strengthened al-Qaeda. It's now a training ground for terrorists from around the world. People are going there to learn the tactics and then come back. Certain irony. Yeah, it is. It uh, seems like the reverse of the way the war on terror was supposed to work. Take suicide bombings, for example. Once unheard of in Afghanistan, now they happen at least once a week. I met a failed suicide bomber in Kabul who survived when his vest didn't blow up. Do you still hope to be a Shaheed? Somebody, somebody who martyrs himself when you get out of here? Of course. Of course. That's mistake number four, the so-called Iraq effect letting al-Qaeda spread its ideas and methods around the world. Thank you. CNN terrorism analyst 